I appreciate you guys coming up. I'm excited to uh, uh, spend this time talking to, I think there's people out there. It's hard to see with the spotlights, and they're so far back. There is a prize underneath the pew in the first three rows um, for anybody that cares to be closer to Jesus. But <clears throat> we're, we're going to uh, just have a conversation here, and uh, I do want you to take advantage of this up here. Just take your phone and Set it up there, and, and it'll scan that and then submit a question for us. And that, that way we can uh, intersperse those questions. I'll, I'll have my phone on, uh, ready to look for those responses as you do that. Um, but I, I, let's start with introducing yourself and your, and your wives and all that. And, and wherever your wives are out there, if they'll wave at least so we can kind of see where they are. So, David, why don't you go first? Okay. Can you hear me? You know, I feel like we're in a movie, Men in Black, both of us. Well, I heard this was the official <laughs> uniform, so. Here we go. I'm David Gay. Um, actually, I grew up uh, in this congregation at Harrison Irving, so it goes back a ways. Even though I'm only 36, it goes back quite a bit. But I'm married to Joy, and we have two kids, uh, uh, Jonathan and Jenny, and uh, we have four grandkids, uh, and uh, I married Joy in 1973, and she went to, she was from Sweetwater, went to Fourth and Elm in Sweetwater, uh, Church of Christ there, so, and what's really nice, we met here at college, uh, I graduated from Tech, came back here and was working on my master's, and met her at the Christian Campus Center. So that's always been a place that's near to our hearts as far as uh, having grown up here and then met your wife there too. So that was a good thing. I'm Lynn Bowling. I'm married to Jackseen, and uh, she was my ticket in. Uh, she's been attending here since it was Harrison Irving in 1964, I believe. Uh, I came here in uh, 1978, I think, for the first time. Um, I grew up in Monahans, came here to go to college and uh, found a better idea and just got married instead. <laughs> uh, we have had three children. Our oldest daughter, Jana, passed away 12 years ago. Um, Cody and his wife, Brittany, work with the Church of Christ in Georgetown. They have two boys. Uh, Clayton and his wife, Jessica, of course, work here and uh, with Sutton and Luke. So uh, we're blessed uh, there as well. Great. Well, while you got the mic by your face, go ahead and tell us what you do, and then tell us about some ministries you're involved with here in the church. Well, I've, um, I've worked in sales for the last 25 years. Uh, right now, I work for a manufacturer that builds video boards, uh, digital signs. Uh, as far as ministries, it's really changed over the years. Uh, when we first came here, uh, we were involved as part of the first group of huddle leaders, uh, working with our youth group. Um, but even before that, I was uh, part of the facilities maintenance ministry back when we had such a thing that took care of changing air filters and uh, small odd jobs and things around. Um, and now I guess we've kind of worked ourselves up into the campus ministry. Um, but really and truly anywhere where there's fellowship to be had, any anytime we have an opportunity to meet other people and uh, be in contact with them, that's probably where you'll find us. What do you do and what ministries are you involved in? Uh, actually, I've, I'm retired from Ethicon locally. Uh, stayed out there about 39 years, and then I retired on a Friday and started working full-time for Kirby Hartman for roofing. So I'm still climbing up on roofs and not falling too much. But uh, uh, I was a deacon originally. Uh, I was involved in teaching our youth, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade boys way back when, and uh, have taught some adult classes too. Uh, right now, I'm with our, uh, primarily involved with our safety and security team. Uh, it's not really a ministry, but that's kind of a full-time job on Sundays, and we enjoy doing that. Okay, so now tell us something unique about yourselves. Or if you don't want the fire to be on you, tell us something unique about your wives. <laughs> Just kidding. We're talking about yourself. Yeah, y'all are smarter than that. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. 
Go ahead. Your, do I need to ask your wives to no, tell us something unique don't. about you? That no. might be even better. Um, early in my sales career, I actually worked for a radio station, so I got to do some on-air stuff with sports and uh, just regular uh, an oldies rock and roll station. What was your favorite song? It's hard to say from that genre, but probably a ZZ Top song of some sort. Sharp Dressed Man might be my top. That, that makes me sad that he thinks ZZ Top is oldies. <clears throat> I was in high school. That was really... Okay. All right. <clears throat> Something unique about you. Well, let's see. I'm, uh, I enjoy hunting Indian artifacts, arrowheads, things like that. Uh, I love to read. Uh, um, I love to... You're going to think this is crazy. I love to do math, especially algebra. I've tutored a little bit, but I love math. I wanted to be doing something with math and decided, boy, I really want to teach. No, I'm not as good as Trey, Trey Smith, so I didn't, I didn't do that. There's so many places we could take this right now. <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm gonna, so tell us about the Indian artifacts. What's the most unique thing you found? Uh, I've actually found a corner tang knife, uh, which is made out of alabates. There's only one place in the world that alabates comes from, and that's in Texas in the panhandle. So if you find it in California or other places, that means they traded thousands of years ago. But I found one here in San Angelo. So I know Joy always says, why do you collect those rocks? I said, Joy, these are artifacts. These are thousands of years old. They're not just rocks. Now, when I pass away, my kids have sworn they're going to put them out in the alley and fill holes with them. But... <laughs> Okay. Again, uh, so, so go back to your reading. What do you like to read? Uh, I was an English minor, and so I love uh, English and American literature, particularly 19th century. And my mother was an English teacher, and so I, I grew up loving poetry, believe it or not. In fact, I've read to her several times. She's in a nursing home now, and, and we love exchanging. In fact, we have a lot of poems memorized, but I love literature, American and English literature especially. So dare I ask if there's a short one that you have memorized that you want to share? Uh, Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, suddenly I heard a tapping as if someone's, as if one's suddenly rapping, tapping at my chamber door. Edgar Allan Poe. I like it. Well played. Can you sing one of the ZZ Top songs for us? Nobody here wants to hear that. <laughs> That's why you played them, right? That's That's right. I got you. Hey, I'm with Lynn. Uh, <laughs> I love, actually, I like two kinds of music, rock and roll. So we, <laughs> or country and western. Uh, there you go. Oh, my goodness. All right, I'm looking to see if anybody's responded yet. You know, I hope you listen to the, is that the code up there, Phil. That's it. It's up there. Last time I was coded, I was in the hospital, so uh, I hope to... Oh, no. We've got Scott Allen up here telling jokes again. All right. <laughs> so let, let's, let's change the pace a little bit. Since I don't have any responses yet, nobody's posed a question. Um, <clears throat> why be an elder? Here, I'll start. Actually, I, I never even thought about it. Uh, I was chairman of the deacons at one time, and I remember being asked, but I really didn't think much about it. And then, uh, like a lot of the folks here recently, you're asked, and it's, gosh, do I, I not me? Why me? Why me? Uh, am I qualified? Am I able to do that? Uh, you know, kind of feel like, felt like Moses. You know, I, I just, I can't talk. I can't do that. But uh, we prayed about it, and Joy and I talked about it, and, and I decided, well, if this is what God wants me to do, how can I say no? So I, it's always been a special place in my heart for those that are chosen, most recently Lynn and several others, that, you know, you may not be seeking it, and I think that's a good thing. Uh, I think it's your call for it. You're called to do that, and... It'd be difficult to say no if 
if God is saying, that's what I want you to do. So that's kind of where I come from. And I think David uh, mentioned it, but when you're asked by members of the congregation, would you consider it? My first response is, have you not been here long? But it is a calling, um, and it's hard to say that and try to be humble about it. But um, I'll just say the, the first time I was asked 15 years ago, I thought I was the perfect guy for the job. And I really wondered how this church had survived without me as an elder for that long. But this time, I, I really felt like I was completely unprepared and incapable of doing the job. But I had a, a sweet lady stop me one time, and she said, you know, maybe some of the troubles you've been through will serve you well in this position. And um, I'm not sure if that's why God selected me or the congregation put my name forward, but maybe some of those fires will benefit somebody else. Can you think of maybe some of those fires, some of those troubles you've been through that you think have really prepared your heart to be able to serve this way? Well, let me, if I can tell just a short story. Uh, when we lost Jana, we had 40 or 50 people uh, at our small group, uh, one of the homes of our small group members that night. And it was just a tremendous, as we look back on it, a tremendous amount of support. But the next morning I looked on my driveway and there stood a man who had lost his child. And it was different. So having lost a child maybe gives me some ability to comfort someone who does. Um, but that's just one of the things that perhaps God's been doing in our lives to prepare us. Thank you for sharing that. So growing up in this congregation, you've seen a lot of change. Um, are there any stories you're willing to tell on yourself about things you did as a kid? And, uh, you know, like, for instance, I swam in our church baptistry on a Sunday night, one Sunday night during service <clears throat> um, with three other teens. But... Uh, Anything crazy or unique that you can remember from your childhood and growing up here? You know, uh, I remember when we built this church, my parents and I and my brother came over here one, Wednesday, one Sunday, Sunday afternoon, I think. And this area was undeveloped in here, and there was actually a kid swinging by a rope from this sound thing up here. There's a big pile of dirt over here. And, of course, they'd put the framework up, but this inside and... Uh, and I still remember that to this day is a big pile of dirt and some kids swinging out at it. It's but, uh, but, but let me say this, too. Uh, I have a special place in my heart for our children's program. I grew up in this church. And all of my friends that I associated with at school went to church with me. And that kept me out of a lot of trouble. I mean, I got in enough trouble, but that kept me out of worse trouble. But uh, I am so thankful that we have a, a youth group, and uh, I hope we, we always will, will do that and have good people because I grew up like that. Uh, my cousin's out here in the audience, and he was a, a stellar athlete, he and his brother, and, and I had good examples. They were a couple of years older and were good Christian people. But when you associate with Christian people, it's just so much better you have good examples. My, my college roommate was from this congregation, and so you'd, you'd learn to behave yourself or they'll tell on you. So, <laughs> Yes, they will. And, and the other thing you learn about this church is that uh, every third person is related to somebody in this church, and so you learn not to say much. Um, so of all the elders that you've known, um, who would you say is your example and why? Well, I don't know about example, but the most formative for me was a guy named Chuck Smith. He actually came to the hospital when Cody was born and um, not so gently encouraged Jackson and I that it was our responsibility to give our children the same gift we had been given, which was being raised in the church. And he left the room that day saying, I'll see you at the door on Sunday. And then 
soon after that, we met Jim and Cindy Ashlock. And Jim was just such a gentle soul, but so supportive. Um, so probably those two guys, um, you know, I don't want to do the same. Everybody says Ed and Royce, and, and they're great guys. But really and truly, Chuck Smith's probably the reason I'm sitting here today, because he came and made it important for me to give my children the same opportunities that I'd had. Boy, it is hard to, to name one. I, of course, I go way back. Uh, Homer Jordan, uh, some of those people that went back decades. Uh, but there was a lot of elders and men in this, in this congregation. I mean, you mentioned Ed, and I can see him right here. Uh, Ed and Royce uh, were both elders when I uh, joined the eldership. Uh, there's people like Jack's Bate, Jack Bates, who was a fantastic teacher and and just a wonderful human being. There's just so many, and it's, and it's not just elders. It's it's good people in this congregation, and a lot of the ladies too. I remember years ago when I had cancer, June Green, uh, who passed away from pancreatic cancer. I used to talk to June all the time, and and she would ask about me before I could get the words out of my mouth to ask about her, just a real lady of faith. And, uh, you know, people like that we really miss. Uh, and we have current members, too, who are just as faithful and just as much in leadership positions. But uh, it's really a host of people, too. I, I enjoy this time because it's uh, this kind of peeling back the curtain and and seeing the, the different uh, things that have formed their hearts and formed their character and, and the, the things that you don't, you don't get to see just when they're up here on Sunday uh, sharing during a shepherd's prayer or in a classroom. You're, we're learning a lot of neat things about their hearts and about who they are, their character and their life, the, way they, the things they enjoy. And so, uh, again, I want to encourage you, if you've got a question about something, uh, be sure and send that in so I can share that with you. Well, so what do you think is, and, and this may be in part of some of the answers you've already given, but what do you think is, has most shaped or had the greatest influence on your personal faith? Well, you know, the one individual would be my mother. Uh, she's a great woman of faith, and uh, of course there's so many things. This church, too, and I mentioned uh, the kids that I grew up with, which were good kids, uh, uh, just really influential, a lot of teachers, but I guess I'd have to give credit to my mother. Uh, she brought my dad to the church, and then... Uh, you know, I remember talking to her when we were kids. I was baptized when I was 12 with my best friend, who was a member here too. And uh, it's just so many things. Church can be so influential, not only individuals, but the church as a whole too. So it's, you know, the church and my mother and many, many others too. Yeah, it's, it's really hard to start a list. Um, my family, at least three generations before me, uh, my father, my grandfather, and his father were preachers in the Church of Christ. Um, but probably the most influential person would be my mother-in-law. Um, just her ability to be content in all circumstances, to truly lean on her faith when things didn't go the way she wanted them to. And she was strong enough to tell you she didn't want to do something. But she was also strong enough and faithful enough to say, but whatever is best is what we'll do. And that, not just that lesson, but the lessons she taught were probably as formative for me as any. So... <clears throat> When you think about your personal ministry, um, I, I want to couch it that way first, personally, and then maybe what you think collectively for all of us. But what would you say is your greatest 
your greatest ministry burden or passion? And then what do you think should be a, should be a passion or a burden for us collectively? Well, that's easy for me. I, my biggest passion in ministry is fellowship. I think I mentioned it earlier. I love to cook. Um, I've been blessed with the means to cook for a lot of people. And I, um, David and I are both old enough to remember potlucks and casseroles and all those things. And I remember not just the food, but the fellowship that went with those. And I think that's one of the challenges that faces us more today than it has ever in the church and in society in general is the, the face-to-face fellowship where we can truly share each other's burdens and successes. Um, so if um, looking forward, I sincerely hope we can get back to the days where we spend time together um, in the Word for sure, but also in fun and, and enjoying each other's company and, and just having a nice meal to, to sit down and get to know each other over. Boy, there's, there's really so many. Uh, I think I mentioned our children. I just have a soft spot in my heart because I think, uh, you know, that's the future of the church is the children we're bringing up and uh, just to teach them and to love them and nurture them. Nurture is probably a better word to cover it all. Uh, as I get older, I'm enjoying talking more to our senior, me- senior members uh, you know, I just can't believe it. Will he be, is what, 103 or 4? And, uh, you know, I enjoy seeing her every Sunday. In fact, I have to see her every Sunday. Here a couple of years ago, I was out one Sunday. I was sick, and then the next Sunday we were out of town. And so she starts asking people, where's David? Where is he? And I'm thinking, oh, my word, she's asking about me. I'm in real trouble. <laughs> you know, if Willie B. Slaughter's asking about you, you're in trouble. <laughs> so I make it a point to see her every Sunday. But, uh, uh, you know, we just lost. So, so on, on that note, it's okay that she sits in the back, isn't it? You're right? Cause, That's cause okay. Willie yep. B. I'm, just, I'm not going to argue with The rest it. of you don't really have an excuse. I'm just saying. Right? Y'all can walk this far <laughs> Anyway, sorry, Dave. And we she, had this conversation earlier about how hard it is to sit yeah, in the front. That's right. And she's here every Sunday, by the way, too. You know, if Willie B can make it, surely we can. But uh, I think we've just been so blessed in this church to have a number of ministries. And I, I go back to, um, you know, we plant, we water, some of us water, but God gives the increase. And we've done so many God has done so many great things since his congregation was formed back over 100 years ago. I mean, look at what we have now. The Christian Campus Center, which is where Joy and I met again. And, uh, you know, Rust Street, Village East, and uh, just so many things where we've reached out and, and, and God has guided us. And hopefully with our new vision group that we'll be able to do some great things in the future and actually God gets the credit for that but let him guide us in the right direction so it's kind of exciting too absolutely thank you for that okay so when you when you think about the character of God and the characteristics of God um, and you you kind of draw to mind all the different things all the different characteristics of who he is um and this is a question we've asked each week, I know, uh, but I think it's a, a, a really good one for us. Other than love, when you think of the characteristics of God, um, which characteristic of God do you think our church needs to grow in? And uh, when you pray for our church family, what is something you usually pray for? Uh, you know, I've thought about this question, uh, and you took the best, love. The greatest of these is love. So, But I think as a church, uh, grace, forgiveness, uh, you know, none of us are without sin. And it, it's easy to criticize others. Uh, I hope we continue to grow, and I think this, this church is great in, in that we do forgive. We 
We do grant grace to others. I hope we continue to grow in that. I hope we continue to grow in the Word. You know, when I was growing up, and Judy and Paul and some of the others out here, uh, we were really known for knowing the Word. And so I hope we really continue to do that. You know, Church of Christ was always the one. They knew the Bible front and front to back. And uh, I'm not saying we don't now. We've probably slipped a little bit. Uh, but I hope we continue. We've always got to be firm in the Word. And so I hope we always continue to do that. And But other things go along with that. The Spirit, uh, especially. I think years and years ago, we... We didn't neglect the spirit, but it wasn't brought to the forefront as much. And now I think we've done a better job of that because the spirit lives within us. And that's something that we need to be aware of. So a number of things, I think. Really and truly, I'm not going to use the right words, I'm sure. But the thing I, I, I want us to celebrate is the grandeur of God. We, we talk a lot about mercy and grace and the only reason we have the hope that we have. But it, even in West Texas, it's not hard to look around and see the miraculous things that God does and has done. And I think sometimes we get caught up in the day-to-day -day mundane things of church rather than celebrating the glory of God the grandeur of what he has done for us, not just the physical things, obviously, but the sacrifice that he made so that we could have the relationship that we have. You know, let me add to you. Did I, I say it wrong? I'm sorry. No, you said good. You're good. You know, for a new elder, that's good. <laughs> you know, I, I find myself praying either alone or sometimes in our uh, elder group uh, praying to God as a one and only true living God, the great almighty God. And, and I think you're right. Sometimes just the grandeur of God. We, he's done so much for us. Sent his son, sent his spirit. Uh, but he is the one and only true living God, the only God that there is. And I think we always continue to acknowledge that. So that's, that's a good point, Lynn. Okay, so I'm <clears throat> trying to pull up my, my forms here for us. Um, while I'm doing that, um, I, one of the, the questions that uh, came up in, as I was talking about you guys earlier today um, is about hobbies that you have. What are things you like to do besides the picking up rocks and stuff? <laughs> What are other things you're involved in? Are there, uh, I guess we were talking about, um, are there like civic organizations or any other groups, uh, things that you're involved in, other organizations, other areas of interest like that? Probably the only hobby I have is cooking. Uh, as far as other groups, uh, we try to spend a lot of time with uh, Angelo State, especially the athletic department, uh, supporting those folks. Um, but Jackson worked there for 20 years or so, and uh, we've got to know a lot of the people at the university, so we do spend a lot of time with them. Uh, probably mine is pr uh, grandkids. We spend an awful lot of time with grandkids and enjoy that. I'm just, I'm amazed. In fact, I talk to Ed Houston periodically about the crazy things kids say, and that just amazes me, some of the things that are, our grandkids say, uh, I was involved before I retired with United Blood Services and <clears throat> several organizations like that, uh, but not so much anymore. It's mainly grandkids since I quasi-retired, still working. But uh, And then church, we spend a lot of time doing church things too, uh, visiting and, and uh, I've I've enjoyed more and more in recent years going to the hospital to visit people. And and even in my work, it's amazing to me, Phil. Uh, I go out and look at somebody's roof and talk to them, and you run into a lot of people with problems or with challenges. 
And I remember a lady that I talked to, uh, I could, I went inside to look at a leak and she, I could tell she, she said, my husband used to handle this and I could see a tear in her eye. And she said, yes, my husband died a few years ago. And she really almost started crying. And I said, you know what? Uh, he must have been a great person. I said, you would not be crying if he didn't mean a lot to you. And she said, that's exactly right. And I said, would you like to pray? And, you know, us roofers aren't known for praying too much probably. <laughs> but I said, I'd love to pray with you. And there's been several people like that. And they say, gosh, I'd love to. Would you please pray? And I know you've done that many times as a minister. and But a lot of people really appreciate it. But we don't think to ask sometimes. And I think that's one of the things about both of you guys that through the years I've learned is that um, – you see your your occupation not just as an occupation but also as a place of ministry and so when you encounter people you're both sensitive to the spirit of god leading you to minister to those people that, that you're with and i i appreciate that about both of you uh, as i've heard story after story through the years of you doing that and so um, i think that's a, a great example for all of us uh, to follow uh, one of the questions that was asked here is uh, similar to uh, one that we uh, just asked a moment ago, but it says, what are some areas of growth uh, that you personally want to help see this church grow in? So I'll let you interpret that question. I'll, I'll say it again the way they wrote it. And what are some areas of growth you personally want to help see the church grow in? I think we can build on what Rust Street has become. Um, it's a tremendous ministry for a lot of churches and a lot of people in town, but I think it's almost become the safe answer as well. When somebody says, well, what do you do about benevolence? What do you do about the homeless? What? Oh, Rust Street does that. And that's, it's tremendous that that ministry has taken that life of its own and grown into that. But I think there are so many ways for us individually uh, to serve people who are marginalized, um, working with the campus center, there are kids on our campus who don't have enough food to eat every week. And I know the same thing's true about the elementary campus and the, the middle school campus. And I think we have been blessed in ways to be able to address that. And I think the, the hunger issue is, is one facet of it, but I, I think there's many more ways for us to serve the underserved in our community. And, and that's just going to become more pressing in the coming months as, you know, food prices continue to rise and, and things of that nature. So I appreciate that sensitivity. What do you think? Well, along that same line, I, I would hope that every one of us would be involved in some way <clears throat> in the church uh, to serve. Even the oldest amongst us can still pray. And, and do things in that way. I talk to my mother periodically, and she says, as long as I'm alive, there's something that I'm supposed to do. I'm here to serve, whether it's being kind to one of the attendants at the nursing home or praying for others. But uh, I'd like to see everybody involved in doing something. Um, you know, I'd hate to get, hate to meet the Lord one day, and he said, and him asked me, what did you do? I better have a good answer. And I don't mean that uh, everybody's got to be able to lead singing or pray, but there's things that every one of us can do, and I think we'd be a, a much stronger congregation and, and we're strong now, but I think we'd be even stronger if everybody's involved. Everybody does just a little bit. Appreciate that. Here's another one. Uh, this, says, uh, this is an interesting question. What's one thing... Uh, that you'd like to see us bring back that we've previously done? I think the rope swing would be cool. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> We're, we can pray and go home now. We're done. That, that's a great answer. Something we've, something we've done in the past that... Uh, can you think of anything? That was, uh, I think more... Well, Lynn mentioned something earlier, and I thought it was great. More fellowship type events, uh, you know, it's, it's so difficult in this day and age with as many things as we have going, and uh, it's just a busy, busy time, but I think we do need to fellowship more together, 
be together as much as possible. Uh, you know, I guess in the old days we did some old ice cream suppers out on the front yard and, and those kind of things, and those were always fun. But any time we get together to do things, uh, I'm just amazed when we do things like blessed to be a blessing. I feel so good after we do something like that. And, you know, our part is, as elders is to be out there praying, and, and we love doing that. Uh, but I hear so many people say, boy, I'm glad I did that. I met some people, and so being involved and, and uh, fellowshipping together. Yeah, you know, uh, Lynn came to me one day a year ago or so and said, uh, I've got this grill, and I've got all these guys that like to cook and smoke meat, and we want to serve some out. So he said, I've got this idea about what if once a quarter we just did a fellowship meal and we cooked for everybody? And <laughs> I was like, sounds great. And then he was like, well, do I need to, like, share that with the staff or anything or anybody? And I was like, not really, but come share it anyway. And sec the second that he came in and shared it with everybody, we all got right behind the idea as a group and said, this is fantastic. And so those fellowships that we've been doing each quarter uh, evolved from uh, into something a little different, I think, than he even he first had in mind, into something just it's a blast. I love getting together on those Sundays in the gym. The food's always great, but going from table to table, I, I, my first ministry was with a guy named Abe Lincoln, and uh, that, that, that was his name in Seminole, how long, Texas. How long ago was that? <laughs> and so 30-something years ago. And uh, Abe was in uh, Seminole, Texas, and uh, uh, he said, Phil, I'm going to teach you how to do some ministry. And he said, the first thing is, this is how you do a potluck. He said, uh, you, you don't ever get in line. You just, uh, you, you never get in line first. As, as a preacher, you don't do that. He said, you walk around and you visit with people. And uh, then you go into the kitchen and you say, uh, you know, while you're, while you're in line, you're looking at what's in the, in the food line to see what's there and see what your favorite might be. And then you go in the kitchen and you go, wow, ladies, y'all are amazing. That food out there looks just absolutely wonderful. You know, that such and such casserole or whatever, that reminds me of my childhood and my mom. And it's just, oh, wow. And, and you just build it up a little bit. And, and then you say, oh, and by the way, that banana pudding, I sure hope there's some left when I finally get through the line. And then you go back out and you keep talking to people. And he said, then what's going to happen is they're going to walk up to you at some point. They're going to grab you by the sleeve and they're going to say, hey, Phil, I put some banana pudding away for you in the kitchen. It's up above the, the fridge and, and all this. And he said, but if you go to the line first as a preacher and they run out of something, they're going to go, that fat old preacher eating all the food and everything. And you just can't trust him. With so when I'm, <laughs> I don't know how to do it any other way. When we do our fellowships, my wife hates it. I won't go through the line with her. And she's like, would you hurry up and just get some food? I'm just visiting with people. I'm not going in the kitchen anymore and, and smoozing like that. I usually just go ahead and grab my dessert and hide it. Um, but there's something about traveling through that room and watching all the different conversations that are taking place that's just awesome. I love it. And I usually just sit down with somebody and start talking. And uh, they feel a little awkward because I don't have food, and they do. And, but I'm, I really appreciate that time, and I think it's very special. And so I, I appreciate uh, all the work going in toward that. That's a, a great one. Which, go ahead. Does that mean no swing? No, no, no. We can have the swing as far as I'm concerned, okay. yes. Uh, so speaking of weird things like swinging here and stuff, I was talking with Judy Clemmer. She, is she in there? Sunday I was talking to her, and I said, what's the strangest thing you remember about your time here and raising your kids here and stuff. And she said, you know, we used to do these, uh, uh, like a, a haunted attic here in the church during Halloween. And I said, a what? And she said, a haunted attic. And I was like, you're kidding. She goes, no. She said, we put a coffin up in this attic and have people come up the, the stairwell there to go into the steeple. And, and I was like, I bet we could get behind that idea again. <laughs> but... The insurance company may not like it. Um, so, all right. So that brings us to another question that I really think is important. And it, it tells us how much we can trust you. What's your favorite Mexican restaurant in San Angelo? Oh, that's easy. Armentas. 
a smattering of applause. Okay, let's see, David, if well, you've got a better one. Well, not everybody can get in there. They only have 14 tables, so. <laughs> let's see if David has a better. No, actually, well, let's see. Probably Armentis. I like Fuentes downtown, uh, but Armentis is probably, a, well, no, you know what? There's one out on, another, another thought, there's one out on Shadburn, and it's uh, El, El Rincón de San Miguel which means a corner of San Miguel. And one of our guys' uh, wives t uh, actually runs a restaurant, but it's more European style, or it's really Mexican, true Mexican food. And it's out on Chadburn, a little place, in uh, El Rincón de San Miguel, but it's totally different from what I'd call Tex-Mex type. So it's Do you good. get a discount for every time you say the I name? I do get a I discount. Just All right. So I guess that leads to another natural question. Is it Julio's, uh, Diego's, or Corner Stop? No. No. Wow. <laughs> All right. It's Corner Stop. That I'll is, second if you that. wanted to know, it's Corner Stop. All right. I, I've gone through the three questions that I had in here. Anybody else have another question? I don't mind taking them from the audience. Well, Phil, I think we're out of time. <laughs> <laughs> Joy, do you have any questions for David? Oh, okay. Jack, seen any questions for? Okay, just checking. Huh. Favorite movie or? Do you, Do you have a favorite movie? Well, I got a lot of favorite oh, movies. Oh my goodness! <laughs> uh, Last of the Moccasins, or maybe it's Mohicans. Last of the Mohicans. <laughs> and uh, anybody remember Three Days of the Condor? Older people. Not even the older people remember that one. Okay. <laughs> Saving Private Ryan. And uh, actually probably one of my most favorite is uh, Dances with Wolves. I always like that See the one. Indian theme going through all of this stuff? Yeah. yeah. All right. Do you have a favorite movie? No. No? Okay. You like them all? No. No. Are, are you a, a Marvel guy by any chance? No. No? Wow. So, invite him over to smoke meat. Don't ask him to stay for the movie afterwards. That's what we just learned, okay? Because it's not going to happen. Do either of you guys play guitar, piano, the harp, anything like that? I play the radio really well. The radio, okay. We learned that earlier. That's okay. And I have a guitar. And you have a guitar, but you don't play it. Don't play okay. It. <laughs> All right, we don't have to stretch this to the full hour. We can uh, fellowship ourselves. It's probably better that way, too, isn't so, it? <laughs> so I'm going to pray over us. And I really appreciate you guys sharing about your hearts and your, just who you are. And let us uh, learn more about you. And uh, uh, I would have loved for your wives to have told us stories about you. Uh, maybe they'll uh, uh, write it and we'll put it in a church email or something and uh, learn some, some things about you, some quirks maybe or something. Well, so, so who cooks in your house? My wife cooks. I cook soup. I can cook great homemade soup, but I have to give Joy credit, and she's a great cook, too. What's, what's the best dish or your favorite dish? Oh, she, oh, gosh, she cooks healthy, so we eat a lot of healthy meals. Probably stir-fry is one of the ones we have almost every night. But... Uh, <laughs> Maybe, maybe not for another week. <laughs> you might be cooking more now. <laughs> Whoops. The first dish Jackson ever cooked was chicken and rice. And that's still probably my favorite dish that she cooks. She does the inside cooking. I do the outside cooking typically. Okay. Who does the dishes? We use a lot of paper plates. <laughs> <laughs> Preach it. There you go. All right. Well, I'm going to close our time in prayer. I really appreciate everybody coming out tonight. And uh, guys, thank you for your vulnerability. And uh, more than that, thank you for your humility that you serve with and uh, your willingness to, to shepherd and to love this church and to help us be kingdom-minded people. I really appreciate that. Father, I thank you for who you are and what you've done in our lives. And right now, I just want to lift up David and Lynn and, and say thank you for giving them to us and uh, putting them um, in the midst of this church for us to, to love them and to be loved by them. Uh, God, I pray for, for them as they first in their, their first ministry to their wives. And I just ask that, God, you help those marriages just continue to, 
to grow and to, to be a great example for others of what godly love between a man and a woman looks like. And so, Father, would you just anoint those marriages and help them as they, they love on their wives and lead in their families, as they, they help their kids and grandkids grow, God, to know you and to see you. And I thank you that uh, they're willing to, to uh, uh, take on uh, uh, some of the tougher moments of family life. And uh, to be able to come in and when people are in need and people are struggling, to be able to walk alongside of them and to serve. And so, God, thank you that they're willing to, to take a towel and wrap it around their waist and get on their knees and wash others' feet. Uh, tonight, God, our prayer is that you bless each of our shepherds and their families. And as we're kind of scattered through the summer, I pray for safety for all of us. I pray that, God, you... Uh, um, let this be a summer that is a time of uh, renewal and, and uh, refreshment for families. Um, God, for all the people in this room, I pray for you to, to move in their lives. That, God, if tonight somebody came and they're burdened, that they would seek out one of us, uh, whether it's one of our shepherds or somebody else in this room, and, and they would let us know about their burden, God, so that we could lift it and we could be there with you, God, to... Uh, um, to be used by you to serve them. And God, I just thank you for the cross, for the, the hope and the blessing that's ours through, through the sacrifice and the love of Jesus Christ. And we thank you for the power of the resurrection and the glory that we get to join in with, uh, Father, as your redeemed children. So as we go from this place tonight, I'm grateful that our kids are next door to us right now having a, a great night with all that Miss Elizabeth and her team have put together. And I just pray that uh, uh, our kids, God, just fall in love with you and, and that, God, they seek you all the days of their life. And so as we head out and uh, we go home to be refreshed with rest tonight, tomorrow, God, help us to be your instruments of peace and of love and of grace. It's in Jesus, our redeeming King, we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. God bless you.